Hello. It is Thursday. It is noon. We're now gonna do. Uh, we're now gonna do our little Thursday lunchtime live, uh, which I'm gonna do every Thursday. So let me know if you have questions that you want me to answer or topics you want me to discuss. Um, and today we're gonna talk about pelvic floor exercises, otherwise known as Kegels. And um, those of you who've been following me would know that. Hi guys. Uh, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of Kegels as the only solution to pelvic floor issues. Um, but I also think that there is a place for intentionally activating muscles. The problem is, in my opinion, most of the time people are either not really taught Kegels, their doctor just says, go do some Kegels, or they're not taught Kegels, um, completely. And the focus is all on the contraction. And so if you are having pelvic floor issues and someone has said, you know, do Kegels or do contractions, and you're really focusing on the squeezing, which is intuitively what feels right. Yes. If you're experiencing leaking, if you have sneeze pee, if you have stress incontinence, if you, you know, leak when you run or jump, it feels like in your brain, the most useful and effective thing to do is to contract more, right? To stop the leaking from happening. But for many of us in, you know, this current contemporary life that we live, um, many of us actually have what are called hypertonic pelvic floors. Our pelvic floors are actually already too tight. Hi there. Um, they're too stiff. They're not responsive enough. And so when the tissues are put under load by increasing the pressure when you sneeze or increasing the pressure when you run or jump or get on a trampoline, the muscles don't have the kind of the viable active length to be able to absorb that increase in pressure. Does that make sense? That if something is kind of short and tight and then you put extra pressure on it, it if it can't release and respond and contract, then that's one of the places where that, that leaking and incontinence comes from. And so practicing releasing and deliberately allowing your pelvic floor muscles to lengthen and open and widen when you're not in a stressful situation and you're not running or jumping or sneezing or coughing or picking up a baby or a dog or a, you know, whatever it is that you do, it's a really good practice. So when you're doing your pelvic floor exercises, as much as we think about the lift, I actually think it's more helpful to think about the relax, the release and the deliberate lengthen. And for some of us, it's very hard to make that happen. Um, the other thing that we have to think about with pelvic floors is that our bodies are not static. Our body, you know, we're like we're here I am, I'm doing my Kegels. I'm sitting here and I'm doing my Kegels. But life happens in lots of different positions. It's kind of like saying the optimal tool for pelvic floor health is to contract and release your pelvic floor while you're just sitting or standing is kind of the same as saying the best thing that you could do for your rotator cuff. Cause remember your pelvic floor is a multitude of muscles. It's more than one, right? It's a, it's a series of muscles on different angles that do different things and respond to loads and actions in different ways kind of like your rotator cuff. So if I were to come to you and go, Hey, you've got some shoulder issues. I think the best thing to do would be to always keep your shoulders still, but just contract all the muscles and then let them go and then contract all the muscles. And that's what you need for excellent shoulder health. You'd look at me like I had three heads. You'd be like, that doesn't sound right. But do you see how that's kind of what the Kegels as the only solution for pelvic floor issues is kind of the same. So if you're in a place where you can just pay attention to your body and do a couple of things, you could do this with me now. If you would like to wait and do it later, I will save this into my feed after we're done. Um, and we're going to do a little stuff with props, which you may not have if you're taking a little break at work. So we are going to, in fact, start in a static position and start by if you're on a chair or if you're sitting on the floor just do a little shifty shift and see if you can get yourself into a position where you can basically feel i want to get to a place where you can see my pelvis 
where you can feel your sit bones and you don't need to be on your pubic bones, but where you can sort of feel that you're, you're, you're on your sit bones and your, your pelvic floor is level to the floor. You may need to do a whole bunch of weird stuff in terms of your position to make that happen. And that is fine. We're not looking for necessarily being straight upright here. Just see if you can get into that position on your chair, on the floor, on a cushion, whatever works for you. In that position, whatever it might be, take a breath in and then breathe out and breathe out through your mouth. I will not repeatedly breathe out through my mouth because I think that will be very annoying through my microphone. But as you inhale, think about your pelvic floor getting wider. So think of your sit bones, right? Because your pelvic floor attaches to your sit bones getting wider. Think of the space between your sit bones and your tailbone and your pubic bones getting longer front to back. That's your inhale. And then as you exhale, don't actually try and do anything with your pelvic floor, but if you fully breathe out, what does your pelvic floor do? What do you feel your pelvic floor doing? Do you feel it doing anything? Lots of us who have pelvic floor stuff, we don't actually feel, you know, like you go to your pelvic floor physio or you go to your Pilates teacher and they're like, oh, feel this and feel that. And you're like, I don't feel anything. I don't know what you're talking about. That's okay. Um, Ultimately, it would be good to get a sense of more kind of connection and feeling to your pelvic floor muscles. But for the moment, just notice when you fully breathe out and you've, you're in this position where you've got some sort of bony connection into the floor and the muscles are in those bones. What do you feel, if anything? And then re again, inhale and let everything widen. And then exhale and now deliberately do your Kegel, do that deliberate contraction of narrowing, but think of it as the muscles creating a smaller position for the bones. For some people that works better than thinking about the muscles, right? So you've got your tailbone, 